my mom lives in the valley and she goes she goes back and forth and um she actually just did it today and she said that there's just absolutely no one it's hard incredible. to believe how it is hard to believe oh how there's uh there's a little virus going around craig oh <laughs> Buckle up, it's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Boom! Boom! Boom. <laughs> there we go. There we oh. go. Hey, Kurt, we... welcome to the uh, Insurance Dudes. Yes. Have me on. We're excited. We like it. Excited. We like it having calls from other worlds, and we know you're in another world. Well, same world. Maybe a different continent, something like that. Something moons? like that. Different moons? <laughs> so how are you doing today i'm doing great yeah i uh just fighting a little cold but could be a lot worse so i'm feel good okay nice well you got a cough Baker, uh, no a cough a little bit a little bit sore throat uh, just cough. just like some congestion in the lungs yeah no none of that stuff. upper respiratory <laughs> no big deal <laughs> Oh man, well, Kurt Baker, uh, you're you are in uh, just outside of uh, Magic Mountain, right? That's true. We're just can minutes we say away from Magic Mountain. Mountain. Yeah, can we say Magic Mountain? <laughs> Disneyland. I don't know if we can say those. Yeah. We can. We're allowed to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we always start the show as a little icebreaker. What was the first concert that you went to? And it could be when you were a little kid. If it was the Wiggles, although that would be they were phenomenal. Around, actually, I was a little kid either so <laughs> i was uh 14 years old and i went to go see the beach boys oh number four yeah yeah number four i you know grew up being a skimboarder and surfer at the beach so the music was just perfect for that yeah it is great that's awesome kirk I, you're right we're close together you're right down the freeway which is incredibly free right is it? <laughs> dude there's nobody I been on it for a while I, I would like to see it I yeah my mom it. yeah my mom lives in the valley and she goes she goes back and forth and um she actually just did it today and she said that like there's just absolutely no one it's hard incredible. to believe how come? it is hard to believe oh how there's come? uh there's a little virus going around craig oh <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a well we are uh, now USA is number one. So we got that. Yeah. Maybe it's not the thing to be winning at, but no. <laughs> USA, USA. Since there's no Olympics, at least we won the coronavirus virus. Yeah, Ugh. that's true. You know, I have a quote on the coronavirus if you want to hear it. Yo, okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh it's by John Wooden. Uh failure is not fatal, but failure to change might be. We all gotta change. Yeah. Truth. Yep. We have to. We have to. So we, before we dive into some other stuff, just why don't we set up the background, like how you got into insurance, how long you've been doing it, and, and then we'll go a little bit off of that, Kirk. Yeah, 31 years with a captive carrier, uh, real big company, good reputation. Actually grew up with being a dentist was my goal. My dad was a dentist. And it was my lifelong dream to practice with my dad. I took all the pre-dental classes, all the, the bio, the chem, the math, everything. I was accepted into dental school. I was very close to going. And then uh, dad died and my motivation died along with him. And I decided oh, uh, I was doing pretty good at this thing called sales. And uh, so I decided to do it. Uh, my uncle, who was a doctor, said, oh, no, you don't, want, you don't want to do that. You want to have a DDS behind your name. And I had already made up my mind that I was going to do it. So when he said that, and I, this was an uncle that I loved. He was, lived next door. He's a great man. But that really put a chip on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, all right, I know the family's full of dentists and doctors and attorneys, but I'm going to be a rebel here and do this thing. And uh, that chip on my shoulder for the last 31 years has served me well. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. So he, you were going to be a dentist. Now, do you think that people are more afraid of hearing like getting a call from a dentist or getting a call from an insurance agent? <laughs> <laughs> right now, a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's funny that I use that analogy all the time when we're, when we're doing training about, you know, look, there's two people they don't want to talk to. It's the dentist and the insurance person, right? 
but they need to, and ironically, they need to talk we to run our office a lot like a dental office. We call it a mm-hmm. dental agency because, you know, we get people in for appointments. We confirm those appointments. You know, we have our dental assistants do as much as they possibly can do uh, with their licenses uh, so that, you know, the doctor or the agent only has to do so much. Right. I love it. Which is the, the goal. I mean, that's the well, point of owning a business. It is. And in fact, speaking of that goal, that my, I tell my team, here is kind of what your job is. It en- encompasses three things. Your job is to make Kirk money. Your job <laughs> is to make Kirk look like a hero, which ain't easy, and make <laughs> sure that Kirk has nothing to do. <laughs> those are the perfect goals right there. Well, yeah, those are, those are the three goals for my team. I can identify That's, with the make, make you look good. It's, it's not easy. Yeah. It is not. It is not. <laughs> they have to do a lot of work to make that happen. And I'm sure when you first entered the industry, it was not that way. I'm, I'm sure you did a lot of, a lot of prospecting, a lot of grunt work to get to where you are today. Can you kind of take us through that journey? Yeah. Yeah. I started in the late eighties and, and things were different that throughout the nineties, things were different. I mean, you guys remember, I mean, Hey, you were the size of your yellow page ad was the big deal back then. Right. And we had to learn to evolve to the internet leads like, you know, like we do with Everquote. And, uh, uh, we had to evolve to, you know, getting our reviews built up, which we're we're working on every day. In fact, we've got a, a system for doing that. And so evolve change, right? Yep. So you, you've had the marketing change over the years and what you, I'm sure that's some combination because you have a, a larger agency or multi, do you have multiple locations? I did. And I recently uh, scaled back and decided to just go to one location, mm-hmm. which okay. was, it was not easy, but it was a good decision. I, uh, yeah. I've got an, another business that's consuming my time and I just didn't feel like I could be doing three different businesses effectively. When did you start that other business? I uh, started that other business last year and it's been good. Time consuming, but good. Nice. What is it? <laughs> if you don't uh, mind, yeah. It, yeah, it's actually called Team by the Minute. Uh, it's an answering service. Uh, cool. it, it's, the unique thing about it is it takes care of our number one challenge that we have as agents, right? Our number one challenge is team. And this allows you to, you know, if you're short staffed or, you know, you're a couple out sick that day or whatever, it allows you to kind of keep things going. Instead of running the voicemail. Yes. Instead of running into voicemail, uh, the stats show that 80% of callers won't even leave a voicemail these days. So this, uh, And you don't know about those 80%, you know, are they calling the agent down the street? You know, right. What are they doing? And 99% of your clients, they want to talk to a a live person. Yep. Um, That's what they say. Yep. And the unique thing about this this is just not your average answering service. This is, it's got custom scripts. It's got a proprietary system. So like, for example, they call in and they say, Hey, you know, I bought a new car. Well, they click to the script, added car get all the, the question and answers and then uh, pop an email instantly to the, uh, the agency. And our goal is to try and make it so that we don't even have to play phone tag. You just get the information and process the change what, and move on. That's, That's excellent. Awesome. And, and it's available to agents. I mean, uh, how many agents do you guys have right now um, right? with the service? Yeah, right now we've got about 30 agents on our service. And, you know, we just started a few months ago. And we've got uh, a other, bunch of other agents who say they want to do it. And that's uh, so we're adding agents and adding staffing because we got a call center. By the way, they're all US based, they're bilingual. So they speak Spanish and English. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah. That's phenomenal. And before we keep going down and more, how can we get a hold of and any agents out there that we might be in a case right now where some agents are thinking SOS, half my staff, they, they don't want to work from home and find themselves in a precarious kind of spot. So how, how can they get a hold of you to yeah, help we're that? Getting, yeah, we're getting a lot of agents that are uh, signing up now because of the Corona thing. They're, 
you know, they can't afford regular staffing. This is pennies on the dollar for staffing. You know, they're giving their people leaves. They're, you know, some people got it set up. Like I got half my team working from home and half of them right out here in the office. And uh, so, uh, but to get a hold of them, they can just go to uh, www.teambytheminute.com. That's our website. They can call uh, our phone number or text our phone number if they don't like to call, 801-797-0580. Oh. Uh, and by the way, special deal for your listeners only. We got a 5% discount going on uh, until the end of April. The discount code for that, if they, uh, they want to take advantage of that, is all lowercase, insurance dudes five. Oh, insurance dudes, dudes five. five. As so if, in they put in, if they put in insurance it. dudes 50. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. <laughs> well, that's awesome. And, and you know what is really fascinating and it seems to happen because I think the folks that are agents, you know, most agents that own agencies um, are entrepreneurial. And yeah. what we do is we, we're constantly trying to, Jason and I talk about all the time, we're constantly trying to figure out, we're working 80 hours a week to figure out how to not work 40 hours a week. And so <laughs> right. we're engineering different methods to solve for all these problems that constantly come up. I mean, it is, we are firefighters, right? Or we're trying yeah. to not be firefighters. And so we see all of these different things, all these different services and ideas come up out of this, out of this world because being so clunky and old school as this, as this industry can be sometimes, especially technologically, there's so much opportunity to come up with things. Yeah. And we the, really, the, the uh, genesis of this was because we had an answering service. We loved it. Now they were just doing name and numbers. They weren't doing these templates like we do, but we still loved it. I mean, they were great. And then the company found out, uh, the company I work for found out that they were not uh, being careful with the data. They were saving some of the data on their systems. And this is typical of, of most answering services. So we came up with a proprietary way not to save the data, to stay mm. compliant and keep those uh, compliance cops handcuffs off. So nice. we love compliance and we want to make sure that we're a hundred percent on that. Yeah. So Which, it's uh, two agents from the same company that put it together and it's cool. And th so this, do you think that this would then be compliant in other pools? In other ponds? Yeah. If uh, just, let's just put it this way. If our company says, says it's compliant, <laughs> holy crap, you know, they are, <laughs> they are tough. Yep. Yep. The big, the big ones are. <laughs> yes. We've got eight. Well, I can't say that. Okay. I'm just going to talk about <laughs> yeah. how many attorneys we have at our company. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I bet. Oh, I bet. That's really cool, man. So can, um, I like to kind of go back to, so, I mean, you obviously saw a huge need within the industry and, and you're helping to fill that need. Take us back to, you were talking about how the industry's changed a lot since the eighties and up to now with internet leads and, and what tactics did you use back then that have completely changed and what, how does it correlate to now? Yeah, I think uh, tactics back then were uh, more face-to-face. -face. We would go around and develop relationships with the realtors and the escrow agents and uh, the new housing developments and um, the car dealerships and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it was, it was a lot of face-to-face -face and, and uh, getting to know people and relationships. And mm -hmm. we still do some of that to a certain extent, but, you know, now it's... Uh, more about multiple lining our, our book of business and uh, going after missing lines, internet leads, and, uh, you know, just a different approach. Have you found the candidate pool that's out there, the people to bring on, that that's changed much over the years or it's kind of the same challenges? No, it's definitely changed in, in our view. Uh, we do more scrutinizing uh, these days than we ever have before because uh, I love keeping a team member for many years, but that just, it's not a reality these days. I mean, team members, the days of keeping a team member for 20 years plus, uh, it's just not there anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we've done is we've got a, a training program where uh, we will 
you know, take a uh, licensed team members who want to become agents themselves. And not all of them want to do this, but, Mm -hmm. you know, it works out good. We've had about 10 of our former team members who are now agents. And uh, so we've helped them and mentored them. And it's been a good thing. I take a lot of pride in seeing them do successful. I mean, I was at a conference uh, a couple months ago and I saw this really nice BMW down in the parking garage. I mean, it was really nice. And then I saw the name of my former team member who's now an agent on that BMW on the license plate. That made me feel great. You know, I loved it. That is cool. (laughs) No, you go, go, man, go. And I think it is crazy because it's um, a trend that I see with successful agents. The successful agents are the ones that truly do help others, whether it be their team or other agents and stuff like that. And then, and then you have agents that kind of like, are very secretive about their, uh, their tactics and stuff. And usually they're, they're the ones that are struggling a little bit more, but it's great to see agents that really help each other. And it's crazy how much it comes back to you when you do do that. I agree. And no matter what decade we're in, I think it's important for us to have passion. If you believe in what you're doing and you have passion about what I'll tell you a quick story, what gives me so much passion about this is uh, I talked a little bit about my dad dying, who was a dentist. He was a wonderful man. People loved him, even though he was a dentist. And, uh, (laughs) you know, we had six boys and uh, the youngest was uh, three years old when dad died. And I was about 22. And, uh, you know, we, it just rocked our world. And dad thought he had enough life insurance. And back in the eighties, when interest rates were at you know, 15% for a savings account. He probably did, but as interest rates continued to drop, that amount of life insurance that he had just wasn't enough. So we kind of felt like we lost our mom and our dad because there wasn't enough life insurance. In fact, mom ended up renting out rooms in this big home that we grew up in just to make ends meet. And, you know, we love to have mom over, but we, you know, we didn't like going to visit her because she had strangers in the house. And, uh, so one of the things that is, I'm really passionate about is making sure that my clients know that story and they don't, uh, you know, have to live what my family lived because that's a big deal. It is. Yep. It's crazy too. I mean, it, it, that, that people need that picture painted a lot of times, especially guys, guys are the worst with, with life insurance. It's like, it's the last thing that we want to pay for. It's like, we got all these other bills. It's like, come on, just like, it doesn't even matter if it's 30 bucks a month. It's the last thing, but it's really, it's our job to really paint those pictures of real scenarios, especially if you're in the industry for a while, you see those scenarios, especially if you lived it, like that's an incredible story to, to really help people. And, you know, again, this is one of those things I think uh, when we talk about story selling, that's one of the things I think stands the test of time. You know, we have another one where we had a, a an actual policyholder who uh, he died and he was like uh, 50 years old. He died and he had fiance uh, from 20 years ago that he took out this life insurance policy with and he made her the beneficiary of it. Well, uh, after he broke up with this fiance, he went on, married another woman, had a child with that woman, and oh, never wow. changed the beneficiary. Mm. Okay. And then we get a call from the the old girlfriend saying, Was this, you know, do I have to give this money to his new wife? And we're like, Well, that's a moral decision you need to make. But this is the kind of thing that people need to come in. They need to keep their beneficiaries updated, they need to keep their coverage updated. They need to know what's going on with it. So I think, you know, facts tell, but stories sell, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Another one that we like to use is um, we had a a policyholder that uh, wanted a a $500,000 life insurance policy. And she was in the middle of moving and she said, you know what? I want to do it. I'm sold. However, you know what? We're in the middle of moving. I got boxes everywhere. So just call me and like four months and we'll do it then. So we made the mistake of doing just that, called her back in four months. And when we called her, there was this long pause on the phone. And she said, I don't want you to feel bad. You did your job, 
but I've been diagnosed with terminal cancer. Oh. I, oh. I would imagine that your company would probably not do that policy now, would they? And, you know, we had to let her know that, no, it wouldn't. And so when people put this off, when they procrastinate it, when they put it at the bottom of their to-do list, these are the, you know, the story cells that we like to use to, to get them off their tail end and, and mm-hmm. get moving on it. Yeah, we all the agencies have these stories, especially, you know, the longer you've been in business, the more of these stories you've heard. I mean, 12, I've been doing it about 12 years. And I mean, there's so many stories. And even on the PNC side, where, you know, they, you do the quote, the producer lets them go. And then over the weekend, they get T-boned or, or they cause an accident or hurt somebody. And then they, of course, want to start the policy. But now, again, you've missed the window. And so, I think part of the education with the team, and it's so, it's so important to be constantly meeting with your team to educate them, get them up to speed, and help them move the needle when they're talking to their prospects. What kind of things do you do in your agency for training? How often do you meet? To be continue. Hey, Jason. Yes, Mr. Craig. That was another awesome episode, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, if people want to get a little bit more action and, and learn how to do uh, write 100000 in premium off yes. of even the worst internet leads, where could they go? They can go to live.teledudes.com. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Are we going to be there? Yes. It's a weekly call that we're doing right now that will – it's live, and it will show you the process. The entire process is mm, super awesome. Mm, I love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sign up right now. Live.teledudes.com. Live.teledudes.com. That's live.teledudes.com. Hey, Craig, there's a new community that we are starting that I cannot wait to tell everybody about. It is our live texting community where you and I are going to answer people's questions and give them free content right are you kidding me we get to talk to them yeah which is awesome but they have to opt in they have to text us at 520-214-2219 that's 520-214-2219 nice i'm Greg. are you going to respond to these texts i'm going to respond to them for sure live i'm into it too it's going to be awesome and it's a it's going to be our new texting community where we're going to get back to everybody that we can and drop some crazy content, free content and free um, the calculator that you just came up with. Mm. That's right. The calling calculator, sales material. I mean, everything for insurance agents. This is it. It's the best texting community out there for insurance agents. Well, what the heck is that number again? I can't remember it. It's 520-214-2219. That's five two zero two one four two two one nine. I love it. I'm gonna text it right now. Five two zero two one four two two one nine. All right. I'll see you later, Mr. Jason. Bye, Mr. Craig. Wait, do they even listen to this on the radio anymore? (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. Nice. Uh, All right.